Welcome to Work in Process, a monthly video series that shares the biggest updates from the process industry across Europe and the US. I'm your host, Kane van Heiningen, Consulting Services Associate here at Coalesce Management Consulting, the process industry consultant that provides engineering and project management services on process investments globally. Today, we will focus on the latest developments in the European hydrogen industry. According to Deloitte's latest Hydrogen Economy Outlook report, nearly half a trillion euros are needed to kickstart the hydrogen economy. Clean hydrogen presents tremendous opportunities for investors, but technological and regulatory uncertainty definitely presents a challenge. Therefore, it is stated that an investment of 490 billion will be required to achieve 168 gigawatts of projected capacity, producing 20.3 MTH2 per year. Our first story is about the groundbreaking announcement from the European Commission. In July, it approved a 5.4 billion hydrogen project jointly funded by a total of 15 EU countries and 35 companies. Seeking to gain an edge in this innovative sector, this project includes companies like Alstom, Delmer, Ansaldo, Bosch and Eno. The group will take part in 41 projects in the hydrogen scheme focusing on generation of hydrogen, fuel cells, storage, transportation and distribution of hydrogen and end-user applications, particularly in the mobility sector. The next story is about Shell's announcement of its final investment decision to build Holland Hydrogen One. Once the plant becomes operational in 2025, it will be Europe's largest renewable hydrogen plant. Holland Hydrogen One will use a 200 megawatt alkaline electrolyzer supplied by Tyson Group and will be powered by the yet to be built 759 megawatt Hollandse Kust Nord offshore wind farm in the Dutch North Sea. The 200 megawatt electrolyzer will produce up to 60,000 kilograms of renewable hydrogen per day. Shell's Executive Vice President of Emerging Energy Solutions, Anna Moscolo, confirmed that renewable hydrogen will play a pivotal role in the energy system of the future, and this project is an important step in helping hydrogen fulfill that potential. Our third story will lay focus on the hydrogen efforts within an entire region, rather than a specific company or other entity. It is about the latest announcements within the Iberian Peninsula. Iberia is looking to develop itself into one of Europe's most important green hydrogen hubs. Portugal and Spain are expected to be able to produce green hydrogen more affordably than other parts of Europe. Geological advantages such as high solar radiation and relatively strong winds allow for these countries to gain this competitive advantage. An example of an initiative is the 500 megawatt green hydrogen project at the Portuguese port of Sines. This project is led by Denmark's Copenhagen Infrastructure Partners and is due to be completed in 2025. Another significant investment is a 2 gigawatt shine project in the northern of Spain. A consortium led by Repsol will invest a total of 3.23 billion. The first 500 megawatts is also scheduled to be finished in 2025. Next, the construction of the first 500 megawatts of the 2 gigawatt project Catalina in northeast Spain is due to begin next year. Initiated by CIP Investus, this investment will be powered by 1.7 gigawatts of solar and wind energy. And then lastly, for the Iberi region, production is also scheduled to begin at the 7.4 gigawatt Hydeal Espana project by the end of 2025. And then our last story to share is the new hydrogen alliance between Germany and Canada. A recently announced export agreement between Canada and Germany offers Canada an opportunity to export hydrogen to Europe. The hydrogen alliance proposes a transatlantic Canada-Germany supply corridor to start exporting hydrogen by 2025. With the export of hydrogen from Western Canada, the exportation could be initiated even sooner. The supply chain proposal is to ship ammonia 7 from Alberta to Europe and specifically design ammonia freight containers via the port of Churchill in Manitoba. Ammonia containers shipped from Alberta would then connect with the Hudson Bay Railway for delivery to a container terminal located at Churchill. From there, the ammonia could be delivered directly into a container ship in Europe or proceed via feeder service to Halifax to be loaded onto a larger container ships to cross the Atlantic Ocean. These were the biggest updates from the process industry across Europe and the US. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, a comment and a share. If you have an advanced engineering project coming up, CMC provides engineering, construction and project management services to help you deliver your project ahead of schedule and under budget. For more information, please visit www.cmc-global.consulting or reach out to me directly on LinkedIn. Thank you for watching. I'm Kane van Heiningen. This has been Working Process. See you next month.